In this project, we are going to add a rope for the fishing line to the fishing rod we made in the previous video. The main purpose of this whole project is to create an immersive system by implementing a real-life paper fishing rod and virtual fishing rod. Nintendo's Labo series is a representative example. Creating a system from hardware to software is not easy. I still have a rag of the my skill set, but I will try to do what I can do. Okay, let's start today's project. Uh, on this site, uh, they are showing how to create a swing rope in Unity. Uh, there are three different versions of the rope and it's very organized. It explains the fundamental part of the physics of the moving rope. Uh, if you need a physical approach, uh, please take a look at it. Uh, it's gonna be very helpful. I will show you how a simple version of the rope works in Unity. The source code can be downloaded directly from the site. I prepared the necessary parts in advance, let's run it and see how it moves. You can see two cubes on the screen. The two cubes are connected by a rope. Uh, depending on the movement of the cube above, you can see that the cube below is also moving. It's good because the movement is very natural and doesn't require lots of resources. Uh, let me test one thing. How would the rope react if it met the collider? The rope goes through the collider or it should be recognized as an object and bent according to the shape of the collider. Right, uh, let's see the result after making another cube and test it. Uh, you can see the rope passing through the collider. The reason is that because the rope is made of the line renderer, there is no collider in the rope itself. I believe there is a way to add collider in the line renderer. In fact, I tried to use this rope controller to do my project, but I found another asset because I thought it was difficult to implement what I wanted based on this. Uh, first, I will make a new scene. I named it my fishing rod. Uh, this is the asset I choose. Uh, it's the wrapping rope. Uh, I don't like to use paid assets in my project, but there was no way other than using this one for an effective project. I hope you understand. Uh, also, if you have already had a similar assets like this, I'm uh, not sure, but I think you can use that one too. Uh, I'm gonna import it into my project. Good, now it's ready to use. Uh, it seems like there is a small bug in this asset, but it has a no problem running it. I hope the author fixes it soon. I will bring the fishing model I made in the previous video. If you want to see how I made this fishing rod, please watch the previous video. You can import objects created by a magical voxel from Unity without any hassle. Also, you don't have to make a UV material for color representation. Very easy to use. Uh, my fishing rod is divided into two parts. Body and real. The reason why I made it separate is to give each rotation separate later. You will see how it works soon. Uh, create a game object and move these two parts to this to make it easier to manage. Don't forget to reset arrays. Uh, drag and drop, done. Now I can move the whole part of the, my fishing rod with this game object. Uh, not a problem, but I don't think the lightning is in a good position. I'm trying to find the right position for now. Uh, the fishing rod is standing now. I put this horizontally. Uh, it's gonna be easy to work. I don't like the position of the riding yet. I will try to fix it a little bit more. I think this is enough to show the model properly. Good. Oh, I have to make another game object for rotating the rear part. The pivot position of the 3D model of the reel is 0, 0,0,0, 0, so if you rotate it in this state, it will go to the wrong position. So to change the pivot point, I need to make a game object to wrap it up. Uh, you can make it simple. Uh, first, move the new game object to the point you want to rotate. Then make the real of the 3D model a child of the disk game object. That's it. Now you can rotate this game object to rotate the real part. Uh, that's all for the fishing rod preparations. Now it's time to make a rope for the fishing line. I have created a new scene and already added the required asset. Let's make it right away. Uh, from this asset, there is an option menu called the wrapping rope. Uh, let me select and put it in the scene. If you look at the inspector, the part marked in the red must be added. 
Let's finish one by one. I'm gonna make two cubes and change the name of them. A star cube is a place where the loop starts and end cube is a place where it ends. Since the cube is bigger than the fishing rod relatively, I'm gonna change the cube size a little bit smaller. And if possible, make sure to stay in line with the fishing load as much as possible. Uh, the fishing load I made has a total of three sides, a front, middle, and rear side. A straight line is good because we have to make the fishing line pass through this part. We don't need the body part of the fishing load at the moment, so we will keep it invisible and work on it. Now let's set the options one by one in the rope game object. The type of rope is continuous, not finite segment. Uh, this can complete a more natural rope. Uh, I will just use the rope material already in the asset. Uh, insert the star cube into the front end and the end cube into the back end. The threshold is a minimal size of the object that reliably will be proceed in the collisions with the rope. Uh, set the width of the rope to create the desired size of the rope. Uh, texturing mode and UV location select uh, how the rope wraps the surface image. I use the default rope texture, so I will set it to the default value. Uh, you can set the mesh of the rope to set the shape of the selection of the rope as desired. Uh, now it's a triangular rope because it currently uses only three points. I will make a rope closer to the circle by increasing the number of the points. Uh, now the rope is in the shape I want. It looks good. Uh, we need a collider to wind the rope around the reel. Uh, I was going to do right away on the reel I made, but I don't think it's applying for mesh collider, so I will add one simple cylinder. I tried to put the cylinder inside the reel as much as possible so that it was invisible. I can see a little bit though. Uh, now all we have to do is move the star cube to wrap the rope around the rail. I'm going to show you how to do this. You can see that the rope is wound in the collider of the cylinder. It's very intuitive, right? Let's play the scene and see how the rope moves when you rotate the rail. Unfortunately, the rail is rotated but the rope is unchanged. What did I miss? And the answer is I didn't put the star cube into the re-rotator object. That's the reason why the reaction didn't happen. Uh, let's put the star cube into the re-rotator and play again. Uh, rotate the reel counterclockwise to see the rope coming inwards. Uh, since there is no force to pull in the opposite direction yet, uh, there is no action if we rotate it clockwise. Let's go further. As I said, there are three sides in my fishing gear. We have to make all of this part into collider so that the loop can pass through. You can make a wall for this part using four cubes. Uh, let me finish it ASAP. Uh, I will turn off the mesh renderer of the cube later, so it's okay if it's a little bit different from the original form. Uh, to prevent getting caught in the collider, uh, turn off the top and bottom cube first, and then move the rope down with the end cube. To pull from the end cube, uh, add a rigid body so that the end cube receives gravity and falls down. Uh, also, we need to change the wrap distance. It makes the rope bending correctly. After turning on the top and bottom cube for the wall, uh, let's move the end cube. Uh, the rope recognizes the collider and bends. You can adjust the rope however you want. Uh, to prevent the end cube from free rotation, uh, enter the higher angular drag to slow down the rotation of the object. Also, using a higher value of the drag can be used to slow down an object. Uh, let's check the contents of the walk-up to here. Haha, <laughs> there's an address following the end cube. The rope is not moving properly. I missed the option in the rope. Uh, let me go back to the rope and fix it. Uh, here you are. 
the anchoring mode is none. You need to change this to by front end to make it work properly. For your information, uh, when the anchoring mode is none, a rope is free to edit. It's wise to choose this one after setting all lengths and locations. Let's check the result again. The end cube moves quietly on the spot. Uh, there is no more free fall. Uh, let me rotate the reel. Uh, when the reel is rotated, the rope is moving up and down depending on the rotation. I think it's finally working properly. The rest of the work is to create a wall on the side above the fishing gear. I'll make it fast. Uh, create a game object called the invisible wall and move all the walls. Then duplicate this and move it to the next one. It's a fast and easy way. I play again to see if the rope only moves inside the wall. Uh, as you can see here, it's moving inside the wall, I mean in the collider. It's good. If the end cube comes in too much, it will be hard to go out again. It seems like we need a way to stop it. Uh, first, I will extend the length of the rope. Uh, go to the rope game object and change the anchoring mode to none. Uh, after that, you can change the length of the rope. Uh, I think this is enough. Uh, don't forget to set the anchoring mode back to by front end. Uh, let me check it again in the game mode. Everything is working well as I want. I can really in and out sync the rope and put it up. Uh, if I make a fishing hook in the end cube, uh, we can say it's a fishing line instead of a rope. Uh, go back to the scene, let's finish this project. I will turn off the mesh renderer so that we can see the walls. I will increase the size of the end cube so that it cannot go inside. There is no collider throughout the fishing rod. Uh, since the rope passes through the fishing rod, I think placing the empty cube is good to prevent this for now. Finally, we are here. It's working well. That's it. This is all for today's project. This video got longer than I thought. Anyway, in the next video, we are finally spinning the reel of the virtual fishing rod on the hardware. I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.